Hi everyone, welcome to Wildcard Wednesday. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Ben Pulowski. Uh, in this session, we are gonna be taking a look at the GeoTab Drive mobile app. So essentially looking at uh, a walkthrough of the app a day in the life of a driver. So that having been said, we are going to jump in here and I'm actually gonna jump out of my deck and we're gonna be doing a, a live demo walkthrough today right in the app. Now, uh, everything that I'm going over today is taken from the Drive App Manual, which is essentially the owner's manual for, uh, for GeoTab Drive and the administrative side. So after the driver has downloaded GeoTab Drive for the first time and they open up the app, they are going to be presented with this login screen and they will enter in their username and their password that has been provided by their administrator. So I have username and password. Now, there's this plus sign right here. And if you click on that plus sign, it gives you the option to enter in a database and a server. So for 99.9% .9 of drivers, they don't need to enter anything into these two fields below. Uh, if you happen to be a reseller and you are able to access multiple accounts, you do want to put the database name in here, which is why I need to enter it in. But for the most part, for drivers, you're just going to have to put in that username and password. So I can go ahead and click login and it's gonna start syncing in uh, all of my data. So bringing in my uh, previous logs, bringing in my user settings and all that's going to appear. I get this pop-up here at the bottom of the screen uh, and that tells me uh, what exemptions are allowed. So I am allowed to use personal conveyance and yard move. I am not exempt from ELD. Uh, and these exemptions, uh, personal conveyance and yard move, we'll touch on these a little bit later and how you can access them through the app. So right now we are presented with our uh, vehicle screen. Now it'll prompt you to select your previously selected vehicle if the driver is in immediate vicinity of that vehicle, which I am. Otherwise, you can click on select another vehicle and you can select from the list. This is gonna populate with vehicles that are close by. You can see these all say 0, 0.0 miles away. If the vehicle is not in the list, you can search for it here through the name of the vehicle, the VIN, the serial number, or the license plate. I'm going to stick with the vehicle that I currently have and click continue. If I'm not driving, I also have the option here for no vehicle. After I select my vehicle, it is going to prompt me to select a trailer. And there's a couple different uh, ways that I can do that here. So I can select a trailer from a pre-existing list or I can add a trailer that is not already uh, in the list. So right now we have no trailers attached. I can continue without a trailer or I can attach another trailer. When I click on attach another trailer, I have the list here of trailers that are already in my database. I can select any one of these trailers or if I'm hauling a new trailer that's not listed, I can click on this button right here that says new. I can enter in the trailer name. I can add in a comment and hit add. And now this trailer is going to populate back the other way into the database list. When I'm done with my trailers, I can click on continue and I can hit the minus uh, button right up here to detach the trailer. The next screen is prompting me to do a couple things. Uh, number one, this gives me the option to verify my logs, but before I do that, I have to accept or reject any edits. And this is that uh, yellow bar along the top here. You must accept or reject logs that have been changed by an administrator before verifying outstanding days or making modifications yourself. So this is very much uh, baked into the workflow. Um, before you can verify your logs, you have to accept or reject any changes. If there aren't any pending edits, 
this yellow bar just won't even appear here. What I can do now is search for any of the logs that are highlighted in yellow. So we have one here on the 8th, and we have one here on the 11th. I can click on the log. Right now, it's an on-duty log. The requested add is to change it to an off-duty log. And I can either accept or reject this change. I click accept. It'll bring me back here. I still have the yellow bar up top. So I have another log in here that I need to approve. Same thing on the 11th, requesting uh, adding an off-duty log, and I click Accept. Once I go back, whoop, looks like we have one more in here. Whoop. So this was uh, an edited log, right? And we have this driver forgot to log off, and I can accept this change as well. Now that yellow bar is gone from the top, so I don't have any more pending edits, and now I can proceed with verifying my logs. So listed here, uh, I have my records of duty status, I have the date and time, it's gonna show uh, any annotations, it's gonna show any exemptions I've applied, it's gonna show violations. And what I can do is I can verify these day by day. So I can just click on the button that says verify. And this is for yesterday, the 13th. Or I can just scroll all the way down to the bottom here. And I can verify all days at once. So drivers uh, want to review your logs. Make sure that everything is correct before you verify them. You do have the option to skip this. Uh, keep in mind, though, that drivers do only have 14 days to verify their logs through the GeoTab Drive app. After 14 days, if they have not verified them through the app, what needs to happen is the administrator has to print out the logs on paper and the driver has to physically sign them to verify the logs. This is much easier, which is why it prompts you to verify your logs whenever you log in and whenever you log out. So I'm gonna go ahead and verify all days. I hereby certify that my data entries and my record of duty status for each listed 24 hour period are true and correct. And I click agree. Uh, the next screen here, next piece of the login workflow is claiming unassigned logs. So it says at the top, the unassigned logs below were created because this vehicle was moved without a driver logged in. If you believe any of these logs are relevant to your record of duty status, assign them to yourself. Otherwise, you can skip this page. So maybe I know uh, that I forgot to log into the app this morning when I drove the vehicle. So I can say, this log is mine, and it's going to claim uh, the on-duty log that's paired with it. I only have to claim the ones that are my logs. If these logs don't belong to me, I can just hit skip. But these logs are mine, so I'm going to claim them. This is warning me my current availability may be affected. Are you sure you want to claim these logs? Yes, I am. Now we get to DVIR. And you have uh, the option here to inspect, and below that you have the option to skip. I'm gonna go ahead and perform an inspection. Now, if there is a previous inspection, it's gonna prompt me to certify that previous inspection before I do the next inspection. Here I have all of my different DVIR categories. At the bottom, I have other if my defect is not listed. I can add in remarks then I can click on no defects. I also have skip at the bottom as well. So I'll say tires and I will say insufficient tread. And I can say right front tire needs to be replaced. Sign the DVIR by clicking yes. And now it's gonna prompt me to do the same thing for the trailer. I'm gonna skip the trailer for now, but it's the exact same thing as before. Click inspect, perform your DVIR after you've certified the previous inspection, if there is one. So now here I am on the main screen. So we have 
HOS, and you can see here that I'm currently on duty. Now, the reason that I'm on duty is because I claimed those logs from earlier today. I claimed that drive log and that on duty log. Now, this will also put you on duty when you do your DVIR. So even if I had not claimed those logs, when I did my DVIR, this would change me from off duty to on duty. So we have HOS here where you can view uh, all of your statuses, your logs, apply exemptions. Over here, we have DVIR, and then we have messages. Messages is a beta feature. Uh, if you are interested in trying messages out, uh, you need to enable feature preview through your user profile in my GeoTab on the database side. But again, this feature is in beta. Below that are any add-ins that we have uh, in the Drive app. So we have an add-in for short haul, we have GeoTab roadside, ELD info, which I'm gonna come back to toward the end, and here we have an add-in for border crossing uh, for between the US and Canada. Down here toward the bottom, I have my assets. So this shows me my vehicle, and this shows me my currently attached trailer. And over here to the right of that are my settings. In the upper right corner uh, of the app here, I have my username, and I can click on that to either log out of the app or add a co-driver. Then I have that messages icon. And up here, this little red triangle is the information dialog, and this is gonna show connectivity status. You have three options uh, that are currently displayed here. So one is vehicle connected, and if that is highlighted, or if there's a problem, that'll change to vehicle disconnected. It'll be highlighted in red. And what that's referencing is the connectivity of the Go device, not the mobile device, not the tablet. This has to do with the actual Go device. Below that, GeoTab Drive Connected, that refers to the mobile device if you're accessing uh, the app on a tablet or a phone. It could be uh, that it's outside of data coverage. It could be that the mobile device is in airplane mode. Below that is GPS connected, which means there is no GPS on the mobile device. Another option you might have displayed here is power connected, which is whether or not the mobile device is receiving power or not. Now, when you are outside of coverage, you are going to have uh, that message displayed along the top here. So where it currently says your ELD has diagnostics and malfunctions, there's gonna be a message there about connection lost. And when that message comes up, you do wanna make sure that you're updating duty status logs manually in the event of an inspection. More on that in just a moment. Over here in the top left, we're on the dashboard and then you have your three bar hamburger menu up here. And you can click on that to navigate throughout the app. So where I wanna start here is with assets, which I can access through this menu or right from the dashboard. From this assets list, I have my vehicle and I can change that to a different vehicle. I also have a trailer. This is the trailer I have currently attached. I can attach a trailer from an existing list. I can click new to add a trailer that's not in the list, or I can click the minus sign to detach the trailer. Uh, going back a step, uh, when you do change your vehicle, just keep in mind that that is going to prompt you to go through that login workflow again. So it is going to ask you to claim any unassigned logs that belong to you. It will prompt you to do a vehicle inspection on your new vehicle. At the bottom here is your shipment information. And this information is required for compliance. To enter in my shipment information, I'm going to click new. And I'm going to put in the shipper name. So we'll say Bob's Frozen Foods uh, commodity is ice cream. And then we have our shipment document number. When I click add, this is going to attach 
this information to any compliance reporting. Of course, after you make a delivery, whenever you detach a trailer, you do want to make sure that you come into your assets and click that minus sign and remove the trailer. I mentioned earlier that you do have the ability to add co-drivers through GeoTab Drive. And you can do that right up here. If I click on my username, I have the option to add driver. When I click on add driver, it's now going to bring me back to the login screen. And this is where the second driver is going to enter their credentials. So they're going to put in their username and password, and they're going to click login. Prompt them to claim any unassigned logs, and then it'll bring them to the dashboard. I can toggle back and forth between drivers by going back up here to my username. So you can see right now it says driver one. I can change the active driver just by clicking on it. So right now I'm driver one, and now I'm back to my own. I can also change who is in the driver's seat. So when I click on this driver's seat, button, I can choose who's driving at that moment. Here in the uh, HOS screen, we have uh, some information here. So there's four tabs along the top. You have status, graph, logs, and options. That blue bar is displaying how much driving time that you have available at that moment. So I have six hours and 16 minutes left of driving. Below that, you have rest in, driving left, workday left, and cycle left. So I have six hours and 16 minutes of driving available before I have to take my 30 minute rest period. I have 10 hours and 40 minutes of driving time available for the day out of my 11 hours that I started with. I have 12 hours and 16 minutes left of my workday out of the 14 that I started with, and then I have 27 hours and 34 minutes remaining in my cycle. Over on the right, you have the four duty statuses. You have off, sleeper berth, on, and drive. And to change a duty status, you can just click on the button. So if I want to go off duty for my rest period, I can click the off button, and then what's going to happen is over on the left, it's now going to display my rest duration. Right now it's at zero minutes, but that's a timer, and it's going to continue to count upwards. So I want to make sure I let that get to 30 minutes before I go back on duty again. Now when you start driving, what's going to happen, say that I'm on duty and I start driving. When the vehicle hits five miles per hour, it's automatically going to switch me from on to drive. That happens automatically. There's no action required on my part. Once I've stopped for five minutes, it's going to switch me from drive back to on, and it's going to backdate that. So here's what I mean. If I'm driving and at one o'clock I stop, at 1.05, the system is going to switch me from drive to on, but it's going to backdate that to 1 o'clock, which is when I actually stopped. Now, this happens automatically, but if you see that you are outside of cell coverage and you will have a message along the top when that is the case, we do recommend updating your uh, records of duty status manually. And the reason for that is the GeoTab Drive app requires a mobile connection to keep your records of duty status current. So if you were to be pulled over for a roadside inspection outside of cell coverage, your logs are only going to be current up to the time when you went out of coverage, which is why we recommend when that happens, you update your duty statuses manually to prevent that. Now, even if you don't update your duty statuses manually when you're outside of coverage, that's okay, because when you go back into coverage, it's going to repopulate with anything that occurred while outside of coverage. So again, it's really just to protect yourself in the event of a roadside inspection. The next tab over is the graph tab. 
And the graph screen here plots your duty status over 24 hour period for a given day. These logs that you see here are color coded. So any logs that are green are verified logs. Any logs that are gray are unverified logs. If you see logs that are yellow, those are edited logs. If you see a red bar, that is a violation. And if you see striped, like you do right here, that's uh, either a personal conveyance or a yard move exemption. You can use these arrows along the top to scroll through days. And then listed over here on the right, you have the time spent in each duty status. If you click on a log from the graph screen, it's going to show you some additional information, including uh, the duration of the log and when it was created. Down at the bottom of the screen here, it's going to have the starting and ending odometer for all vehicles driven that day. Next to graph is logs. This displays a list of all records of duty status. And this is very similar to the log screen that we first saw uh, when we logged into the app, when we were prompted to verify our logs as part of the login workflow. It shows my previous days. I have the green check mark next to logs that have been verified. I do not have that check mark on my logs for today because these logs so far are unverified. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page, it's going to show my total hours on duty over the course of the displayed logs. Now, if I click on a log, I can get some additional information. And this is the same that we just looked at on the graph. So it shows me the status. This was a drive log, who created it, when the log was created, the duration, when the log was verified, vehicle, address, and origin. This says that it was an automatic system log, which means that the log was generated by the vehicle going above five miles per hour. That happened automatically. Because this is an automatically generated drive log, I cannot edit it. So again, automatically generated drive logs cannot be edited. There are certain logs, and I'm going to show you this in a moment, that can be edited, and that'll be pretty clear you have the option to add a log if need be. So if I have this uh, plus sign right here, click on that, and this allows me to add a log. Uh, I'll just create an on-duty log here, and I'll say this was yesterday at 11 p.m. Ask me for my vehicle and add an annotation. Now, annotations are required. If I don't add an annotation, it's not going to allow me to create the log. So when I click add, it's going to add the log into the system and it's also going to recalculate my availability. Now I also do have the option to edit some specific logs. Here we go. So it did add in that log, and adding in that log actually put me in violation. Uh, now you do have the ability to edit logs, and you can do that if I click on, uh, I'll click on this on duty log right here. Now some logs have a pencil icon. So I have a pencil icon next to on, and I have a pencil icon next to the duration. Now, if I go to one of these automatically generated drive logs, again, I don't have those because the system knows the vehicle was driving. But on this on log here, if, for example, I want to change the status or I want to change the duration or anything else here with a pencil icon. Uh, something else that I want to show you while we're on this screen is this malfunction notifications button. And this also pertains to this red bar that you see along the top here. It says your ELD has diagnostics and malfunctions, tap for details. And whether I click on this malfunction notifications button or this red bar along the top, they're going to take me to the same place. If I have any diagnostics, this bar is going to be yellow. 
if I have a malfunction, the bar is going to display as red. And I have a couple. I have one of each. What I have is an unidentified driving diagnostic, which is created based on how much time in a 24-hour period the vehicle is driving without a driver assigned. Below that, uh, we also have a timing malfunction, which has to do uh, with the time on the mobile device and being able to verify that time. Now, there's a bit of a difference between diagnostics and malfunctions. For one, diagnostics cannot be cleared by the driver. They're auto-cleared by the system. So if I look over here on the right, next to the malfunction, I have this button that says clear. And next to the diagnostic, I don't have that. So in this instance, the diagnostic is going to disappear when the amount of unidentified driving drops below a certain level. Now, if you have a malfunction, that doesn't mean that you should just reach out and press the clear button, because there are specific steps that need to be followed in the event of a malfunction. Uh, specifically, the driver has to notify the carrier of the malfunction in writing. The driver has to have their records of duty status for the previous, I believe, seven days available on paper, and then they can use paper logs for eight days until the malfunction is resolved. The administrator, it's essentially their job to repair the ELD within those eight days. Once uh, the driver and the administrator have followed those steps and the malfunction has been corrected, at that point, then the driver can come in here and press the clear button. We have a document that I'll show you uh, that actually pertains to this. It's one of the three documents that is required to be kept in the vehicle, and it goes into much greater detail on these diagnostics and malfunctions than time allows me to do right now. But I will show you this uh, before we wrap up today. Next to logs, I have my options. So at the very top of the screen, I have my exemptions. The first exemption that I have here is adverse driving conditions. And I can apply this exemption just by pressing the button that says apply today. Now this is to be utilized only if there is an unexpected delay, like if there is a crash with a road closure or if there is a snowstorm. Basically, it's for things that you did not or could not have known about when you started driving. Uh, for example, you would not be able to apply it if you're going through rush hour in a major city because that's something that you reasonably should have anticipated. Uh, below that, you have exemptions for yard move and personal use or personal conveyance. These are at the discretion of the administrator. When the administrator sets up the driver's user profile, they can choose whether they want the driver to be able to apply these exemptions or not. When I'm in here to apply the exemption, I would just press the start button, enter an annotation, and click apply. When I'm done, all I have to do is click stop. Uh, yard move and personal use will not continue through ignition events. So what I mean by that is if I am applying the yard move or personal use exemptions and I turn off the vehicle, when I turn the vehicle back on, it's going to ask me to confirm if I'm still applying those exemptions. And it's not going to happen automatically that they will continue. Uh, below that, we have some uh, driver information, so current driver, time zone, home terminal, carrier number, all of these fields are required, of course, for ELD compliance and are populated from the database. Uh, you have the rule set, driver's license number, and driver's license date. At the very bottom, we have transfer logs and we have compliance report. I'm going to show you compliance report first. Uh, this is uh, if the driver is invited to a roadside inspection by law enforcement, they can provide a compliance report to show the inspector. And you can see it just by clicking on this button right here that says generate. You can see all of the information that is listed here. Uh, we have information on the ELD itself, the time zone, carrier, driver, driver's license information, information on the vehicle like the odometer, the VIN, we have the shipping document number, uh, trailer ID, and you can see everything there for yourself. Down here at the bottom, you have the logs in graph form. 
and then the individual logs below that. You can scroll through different days by using the arrow buttons at the top of the screen, just like on the graph page. Now that is the compliance report. We also support the ability to transfer logs to the FMCSA. To access this, click on transfer, and you have two options here. You have email and you have web services, and it depends on what the officer asks for. You have a comments field, and this is uh, if the officer provides a code that they would like the driver to enter here, which is often used for the DOT officer to retrieve the logs later. So you would enter in the code provided by the officer, and then again, click on email or web services, depending what the officer is requesting. When I click this button, if it works, you are going to get a success message or you might receive an error message like we have here. Uh, if it does go through, it's just going to say status, success. Now this is actually telling us that we are missing some required fields. So we're missing uh, the field, uh, looks like we're missing a last name field. So what I would wanna do is let my administrator know and they would need to add that information into the database. We actually have an add-in in the works that should be available within hopefully a few weeks uh, that will review all of this information ahead of time and make sure that everything is populated. The other error that you could potentially see here is a drive app error. Uh, this is missing data, so this falls back on whatever's entered into the database. If you do see a drive app error here, uh, in that case, you would want to report a bug through the app and uh, open up a support ticket with whoever it is you normally do that. In both cases, so regardless of the error type, if you do get an error, what you would do in that situation is simply show the officer the compliance report directly on the tablet. So this covers uh, the HOS portion from the main screen. Uh, I wanna show you next, I wanna jump down here and show these settings, which you can access through the menu or you can access from the dashboard. Uh, the first option that you have here is check for updates. Now the Drive app is uh, pretty constantly updated with features and fixes and for the most part should stay up to date on its own. If it does not, you can always force a manual uh, refresh by clicking this check for updates button and it's gonna look for any updates and bring everything up to date. Below that you have change password and then you have report a bug. So if you do happen to see an error message in the GeoTab Drive app, if something is not working the way that it should be, uh, we cannot strongly recommend enough that you report a bug because this goes straight to our developers. Now reporting a bug is not a substitute for opening up a support ticket. So the driver should report a bug, but they also should let their administrator know that there was a problem with the app and have the administrator open up a support ticket with whoever it is that they deal with. But this helps us uh, if we see some issues that are becoming more widespread. It helps us to identify and fix these issues even sooner. Uh, also on this screen, so some general information on the company name, the time zone, uh, the unit setting, and then server information down at the bottom. Uh, back on our dashboard, so I'd mentioned before that we have a few different add-ins. Uh, one add-in that I want to focus on for a moment is ELD Info. This uh, is available to you through the GeoTab Marketplace, uh, which you can visit at geotab.com slash marketplace, or you can access it directly through your My GeoTab database. Uh, ELD Info is, uh, provides you with a lot of valuable resources for using GeoTab Drive and hours of service. So first up top, support information, support phone number, and a support email. Below that is the required in-vehicle ELD documentation, which includes the data transfer guide, the ELD manual, and the data diagnostics and malfunctions guide. 
these are the three documents that are required to be kept in the vehicle at all times. Now you can keep these documents on paper or you can store them electronically. Either one is perfectly fine. But if you are going to store them electronically, you need to ensure that these documents are accessible when the device is outside of cell coverage. When I click on open document, this actually is a live link here and it's going to bring me to this document. But I need to be connected to the internet to be able to access this. So you can always click on this little download button right up here in the corner and that will store the document uh, locally on your device. Also available in this ELD info add-in is uh, a couple workflow documents. These are sort of, uh, I guess, quick start guides. Driver's Guide to DVIR and Driver's Guide to HOS. These are short uh, two-page documents that give you uh, basically an overview of how to use the app. And then at the bottom, we have uh, a how-to guide for HOS overview. So this is about a, uh, I believe, a 15 or so minute video uh, that uh, provides a walkthrough of the GeoTab Drive app. Uh, please heed this warning that watching the following videos below will require the use of mobile data, FYI. So back on our dashboard, we have completed our day. And at the end of the day, we need to make sure that we log out of the app. Because what's gonna happen is that if I go off duty, but I stay logged into the app, someone else moves that vehicle, it puts me in violation. So you have to, have to, have to log out of the app at the end of the day, which is in addition to going off duty. You can log out of the app. Let's uh, log out driver one. All right, so now I'm back to uh, just myself as the driver here. So when I click on log out, up to three things are going to happen. It depends on the activity of the vehicle, but up to three. Number one, if the vehicle was driven, you will be prompted to fill out a DVIR. Now, in this example here, uh, the vehicle was not driven, so it's not prompting me to do that. But if the vehicle was driven, that'll happen automatically, and it'll walk you through that DVIR workflow just as it did when we logged into the app. So that's number one. Number two is it's going to prompt you to verify any unverified logs. Just as before, you can verify them by day or scroll to the bottom and select verify all days. The last thing that's going to happen if you are still on duty or in drive is that it'll prompt you to change your duty status. Now, if I'm off duty already, this screen is not going to appear, but it's only appearing because I'm still on. So it's going to prompt uh, me to go off duty, set new status, and it's going to log me out. So that is, for the most part, a walkthrough of the GeoTab Drive app. I thank all of you for uh, taking some time out of your day to join us here today on Wildcard Wednesday. Uh, on our next Wildcard Wednesday, a week from today, we are uh, actually having a non-ELD webinar where we're looking at our new safety scorecard. And then two weeks today, we are uh, going to focus on the admin side of hours of service. So that is two weeks from today. Thank you all very much for joining us here today and have a great week, everyone. Thanks a lot.